Welcome to Dental All-Stars. I'm Eric Vickery, Vice President of Coaching at All-Star Dental Academy and President of Vickery Coaching. And I'm very excited about our guest today, Dr. Amir Lerjani. We have been raving about his dentistry, his full mouth cases. And so today we're going to talk about how to get large case acceptance. So I'm very excited about that. So welcome, Dr. Lerjani. Dr. Lerjani has been practicing cosmetic implant and family dentistry in Orange County for over 23 years. He believes in giving patients a complete range of options to improve their oral health and enhance their smiles. He believes in treating all of his patients with the highest level of service and his goal is to provide the finest dental care and the best dental experience, which, I mean, this is, this is what we teach and train. I love that you've put that out there for everyone. It's, it's so, so good. He received his bachelor's in science from the University of California, Irvine in 95, and he graduated from the New York University College of Dentistry in 99. Is that N-Y-U? Is that what they say, Dr. Larry Johnny? <laughs> N-Y-U, absolutely. <laughs> Since then, he's received extensive training in implant and cosmetic dentistry. He's experienced and licensed in oral conscious sedation. Dr. Larajani regularly takes continuing education courses and participates in professional seminars. He provides his patients the most advanced therapy and the best dental profession has to offer. Dr. Larajani is a member of the Orange County Dental Society, the American Dental Association, the California Dental Association. Oh my gosh, all these places, the implant, uh, implantatorium. What is that? Tell me what that is. The Oris Implantatorium. How do you say that? Just, um, uh... Implants. Just thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. All right. He is the co-founder mm -hmm. of the Noble BioCare Implants for General Practitioners Study Group. That's awesome. He's a member of the American Academy of Clear Aligners and certified in digital smile design. He's been the owner of Santa Margarita Dental Group since 2015 and the co-owner of Dana Point Dental with Dr. Cifarelli. I love her. Uh, since 2017. He's happily married. Actually, so, yeah, go sorry ahead. to interrupt. It's actually yeah. 2006 and 2007. Wow. So All right. Yeah, so it's been, it's been... Wow. Okay. So since 2006 with uh, Santa Margarita Dental Group and since 2007, is that with Dr. Cifarelli? That's correct. Okay. All right. Awesome. Dr. Larajani is happily married and is fluent in Farsi. Uh, some of his hobbies include traveling, philanthropy, collecting, Music, cooking, painting, poetry. Oh my gosh, you're such a romantic. Playing percussion <laughs> instruments, basketball, which we're going to talk about, snorkeling yeah. and watching the Lakers overcome adversity. That's the part we're going to yes. talk about. And uh, Dr. <laughs> L loves spending time with his wife, Michelle, and his kids, Jada, Cameron, and Sage. Love the pictures you guys put on Instagram. You're always so family oriented. I love it so much. So welcome, Dr. Larajani. Yes. I, I've been wanting to talk with you about this topic for a while. And I'm so excited for our listeners to hear how we talk about getting large case acceptance. So welcome, Dr. Larajani. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, Eric. Thank you. It's I'm glad to be here. That was a, that was a mouthful on that, that bio, man. That was a mouthful, right? <laughs> good work, Eric. Good work. <laughs> Implantatorium. <laughs> so Just implants. Implants. Keeps it simple. So let's let's talk. First of all, let's talk basketball. Okay. You're a Lakers fan. Yes. I'm a Warriors fan. We have a yes. very good relationship about this. Yes. Uh, I respect that the Lakers done. I respect that you're from LA and you're a Lakers fan. You respect that I'm a Warriors fan. I'm not, we're not bandwagon fans of each of our, our dynasties. And so yes. we'll, we'll, we'll let the, the Kobe uh, picture in the background go because, uh, you know, like we said earlier, he's he, rest in peace and blessings rest to his family peace. and everything. So yes. Kobe, Kobe. All right. That's, that's as much as I'm going to do. Okay. I've got okay, a buddy okay. from LA. I got buddies from LA. And I give them a hard time all the time about the Lakers right now. Cause they got the ring. Yeah. They got the thing from LeBron, but I think that might be it. I, I think that might be it. But what do you think? Do you think they're going to put another run together here Um, with LeBron? It's, it's, oh, it's tough. I don't know. It's a, he's, he's getting old and uh, depends on who the coach is going to be. And, um, I think that's paramount leadership is going to be big. Yeah. And um, this whole Russell Westbrook uh, saga, you know, who are they going to get? Who yeah. is going to step up, the, um, not the plate, but uh, get in front of the hoop? And um, I don't know. LeBron is an interesting guy. You know, he brought, he, we did get a ring with him. But um, I think LeBron is about LeBron. Um, and uh, he's got to be more of a team player. And then Anthony Davis, boy, that guy is uh, so delicate. He's and built a so, glass, man. He's built a glass. He, 
He is, but he's so talented. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm rooting for him, and you know, incredible. As long as the Celtics don't win this year, I, you know, I'm, I'm rooting, for, I'm rooting for your team. Okay. Yes. We got Hercules, 17 chances. Okay? Hercules, Hercules. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I am definitely on your side uh, this year, Eric, and I would love to see uh, Clay. And you know, Clay is a local, and yeah. um, you know, your your boys win again. And you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Curry won. Um, uh, MVP of the uh, Western Conference. It, the Western Conference. Yeah, Western and you know they named that. Uh, they named it after Magic. So yeah, it's a Magic Johnson trophy. You like to put so that in. Like to put that in there. I have to. Yeah, of it's, it's named that for now. Someday it'll be named the Stephen Curry uh, Western well, Conference MVP. or sh- the Chef. Yeah, we can call him the Chef. Okay. All right, enough, enough basketball. All right. We'll come back. We uh, can yes. talk basketball all day. The two of us. So we won't. All day. We won't. Day. We won't. We'll do another podcast for that. All right. That's good. Let's talk about how this uh, meeting, this conversation came about. You posted on your Instagram account just a phenomenal case. And what stood out to me was this, not only the dentistry you did, which is beautiful, and I know it's functional. I know you're a phenomenal clinician. What stood out to me was, and we'll call him patient X, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, Patient X was, not only was it a full mouth restoration, but the age of the patient. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what was the age of the patient? What is? Um, he's uh, late sixties, almost late seventy. 60. All right, seventy years old. Yeah. I, that's that's the feeling I got. And sometimes you get to this age, and this group starts going, uh, you know, I don't really want to deal with it now. I'm beyond repair, whatever it is. Okay, so I All want right. to talk about that. But first, tell us how the patient showed up clinically in, in you know one minute or less, and what did you treat them with? Like, was this a edentulous patient? You did something? Did they have their teeth? What did you do? Tell us about the clinical side of it. <sighs> Well, he um, actually presented a, a toothache. He had a, a broken tooth and uh, wanted me to restore one tooth mm-hmm. uh, with a crown. And, and um, so uh, um, actually the tooth ended up having to have a root canal and a crown. And so we treated that situation. Complicated situation because of his bite and many years of, um, I think, patchwork. Um, so he came in as an emergency and um, I, I kind of presented uh, different options and really just to address his discomfort and um, get him back for a comprehensive look at his um, oral condition. Wow. So I want to just illuminate something. Oftentimes I hear dentists tell me, I only see new patients in my schedule for an hour and a half, you know, wax or, or, or sorry, no. Uh, impressions, face bone mounted models, you know, all the, but you, what you're saying is, Hey, we're, we're flexible here. We'll get someone in. Was he an existing patient? Was a new patient that saw you with emergency? Well, he was a new patient. Actually, yeah. his, his wife is an existing patient of our practice. Um, mm. um, she sees Dr. Sifrelli. He, he came in as a, an emergency. New Love patient. it. Love it. Look at that. We're, we're and, and even in these busy times where you're booked out so far and everybody's so busy, you can turn these great situations into opportunities. I often think of you got to give up something to get something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And you, right. you were able to connect with this patient. So so what did you end up doing for him? Give us more about his 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 bite was off, patchwork dentistry, bright broken teeth, and you end up turning it into what? It ended up being all crowns, implants. What did you do? Um, well, you know, he had some existing implants, um, and uh, we, we, we really, actually, this is a multidisciplinary case. I, um, reverse uh, skeletal class three, his lower, he had the classic um, underbite, the bulldog look. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, in, in my heart, I'm looking at him and, and thinking, oh my gosh, there, we cannot restore this guy without um, surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I took, and that was something he was adamantly opposed to, as most people are. Um, but we, we got a, a, a prominent orthodontist on, on board, uh, Dr. Di Giovanni, and I sent him in for a consultation with him. And um, he was able to get his bite into a, a pretty functional place. Still, um, you know, the bite was pretty uh, tough to work with as far as getting um, the teeth in a, in a good alignment restoratively. So anyways, fa- fast forward, we, we were able to um, get him um, kind of edge to edge um, in the front. Um, and then restoratively, we opened his, his bite uh, about a millimeter, millimeter, half. And then with veneers and crowns um, and even crowns over existing implants that were placed by 
mm-hmm. other dentists, uh, which, which is really al- always so challenging because mm-hmm. there's so many different systems of implants. Yeah. Um, we were able to get him into a functional place and actually, you know, um, the, he was just a changed man, you know, yeah. um, his biggest critic was, is his mom and, and she has very similar situation, uh, tooth wise. And so he did not want to end up like her. And, um, anyways, we were able to really just reconstruct his smile and his bite and get him in a comfortable place and make him look younger. Love it. Love it. And you're starting to starting to get into what I want to get into there with mom and all that. We're going to talk about that in a second. So t- give me a timeline here. W- when did you first see him versus finish? What was start to finish timeline? I'd say, let's say about uh, less than two years ago, we saw him um, okay. as uh, for that emergency. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then we were from had a root canal. We did some yeah. crowns told him that these crowns would probably have to be redone. Yeah. Um, and, and, and once we get your teeth in the proper position orthodontically with surgery or without, which it was not with surgery, he ended up having Invisalign done and wow. getting his, wow. uh, I mean, it was pretty remarkable. Wow. So for those listening, if you want to see the case, go to Dana Point Dental on Instagram, Dana Point Dental, and you can see it was posted, uh, let's see, May 25th ish, somewhere around there. Yeah. So check it out. You guys can see what we're talking about now. So everybody understands financially, give us a ballpark of the total patient financial investment in just your practice. I'm not worried about ortho and all that, but just in your practice, what would you say the total price tag was here? So we have an understanding of what we're talking. I think it was uh, somewhere around 40,000. Okay. All right. 40,000. Usually for me, I hear anywhere from 40 to 55, 60 for cases like this, even if it's an all in four, all in X, whatever it is, you you see the surgery with the implants and the placement and everything, it gets, gets that price. So now someone listens going, wait, what? (laughs) Let me ask you a question. How often do you do these types of cases? Is this the first time you've ever done this? Do you just once a month, do you do it four times a month? (laughs) You know, I probably get one or two of these a month. Yes. Um, So we're, uh, we're doing some of these really complicated cases that you know take time yeah um i I do see one or two of these a month love it perfect and i don't care what we head into economically you talk about recession proofing a practice these people find ways to pay for this sort of dentistry when they're when they're ready absolutely yeah all right so let's do this how did you do it how did you get he's gone through all this you know, dentistry in the past, nobody's been able to get convince him to do anything different, or maybe they haven't presented to it. Tell us about your verbal skills, your system that you, your approach, how you did this to get him to say, yes, I want to do all of this. Well, you know, uh, Eric, uh, that's a really good question. And, uh, you know, you look at a guy like this, uh, it almost looked like a front teeth and his jaw was put into a really a bad alignment situation i mean it was deviated and all of that and it and he's very he's you know we listen to how people talk how how their body language is and and when he came in you know he he was very detailed and and very um specific and very intelligent person so well researched and obviously he had Mm. been to multiple dentists so i you know it's about really i was just at, i asked him a lot of questions about mm. what his goals are what he's looking for and um if it what what is it that he's he, his teeth were like I, the question is how do you see yourself in 10 20 years from now mm-hmm. um do you are you interested in keeping your teeth uh, yep. um um so basically uh, a lot of question asking and, and, um, and I gave him a lot of time. I knew that this guy would get, uh, would take a lot of, uh, uh, coaching. Um, and, um, basically he emailed me several times with a lot of questions. So we had multiple consultations, um, uh, as well with Jennifer and, and myself. And mm-hmm. so it, it took about two, three appointments, um, after, uh, he, he got the, the braces or the Invisalign done to uh, age and understand what his vision is and what what we see for him. So, Love it. Um, you know, we planned it and um, I, I tell him what to do. 
you didn't tell him what to do right yeah i did not yeah you don't need this yeah. um this is what we can offer what what, what are your thoughts yeah mr jones so let me summarize here let me summarize so when we when we coach and train offices to get into questions right? It, it's, it allows the patient to not feel like you're pressuring them into selling them. And instead of telling someone you need dentistry, right? Need becomes a four letter word, right? <laughs> and we're all yeah. about avoiding that. And so the system that you're taking them through could be considered like people buy with emotion, justify with logic. Your, yeah. your people buy for their reasons, not your reasons. So you're looking mm -hmm. for his reasons as you ask these questions. And it's been right. called a lot of things. I call it finding the why. And so you thought, well, why is this so important to you? And you got to that place, I imagine. Yeah. And you alluded to something with his mom. So why was it important for him to take care of his teeth? What was motivating him? Well, it's ultimately is his mom. Um, she is an older lady and her, her teeth are very similar to his. Mm. And she's had to kind of suffer through um, her life with, with teeth that uh, don't work well. And I mm. think it, it was his, he did not want to end up like her. Yep. That's the bottom line. Yep. Yep. And so I think that was the why. And ultimately, um, he did not feel confident and comfortable He's had implants fail in his mouth and he had uh, crowns break wow. and a, a lot of things happened to him along the way where he lost confidence and, and uh, the dental um, kind of process. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. So uh, for those listening, you want to talk about how you, you have, you have the law of the lid by John Maxwell, right? This is a, you know, as leadership. This is as high as you can go. Well, in case acceptance, your average case size that you get accepted is your own lid that you place on yourself, your law of the lid. When you do what we call an emotional exam or a conversation piece like this, where you're asking questions and digging deeper, you're actually opening the lid. You're moving it out of the way and saying, patient, tell me what's important to you and why is it important to you? What was important to him was being able to eat and chew and function and, and not worry about, you know, breaking things, uh, things breaking down and having it look good probably. But why it was important to him was he mm. saw what his mom was going through. And he didn't want that to happen to him as well. So important. Remember, remember this one. People buy for their reasons, not your reasons. Stop. Yeah. We got to stop telling people what they need to do and start yes. presenting it and, and in a way that makes sense and matches what they're looking for. So, so good. Awesome. So mom was, was older, failing dentition. He was very analytical. He'd been doing research. And so... And, <laughs> The other thing I love what you said is it wasn't a, you can't expect people to do this in one visit. It's going to take multiple visits, right? It did. So it what is it? A, and you were emailing him and, and all of this, right? So tell us about oh, yeah. that. So yeah, he, he would uh, come to the office with a list of questions. He would email us. And so I, I kind of expected that. And we, we put that into the, the schedule. We gave it time. Yeah. Um, I gave him at least a, uh, three, two, three appointments to just meet with us wow. and go over these things. And, and so, you know, the bottom line is I got it. I think I, I love this process. I love to be able to um, give patients opportunities to change yeah. and do it comfortably. And, and I think for all dentists in general, um, when they see teeth like this, it can be very daunting. It can be very intimidating. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's scary. You see these teeth, but it, it's passion, it's excitement, and to be able to give someone functional teeth and give them youth, um, yeah. and and it's it's really an amazing um, gift. It's rewarding. For, for, it's so for both of us. For yeah. I, I I tell him that I'm I'm grateful for him, you know, to give us the ability and, and the privilege to take care of him, and he he calls us uh, he calls me his savior, you know. So it's wow. kind of. <laughs> it's a gift. It, go, it goes both ways, you know, to be able to do these things. Yeah. I remember you said to me that he called you uh, his savior. That's, that's awesome. I mean, that's what mo you found out what motivated him. You found yeah. out how to connect him. You spent time listening to him. You asked him a lot yeah. of questions and you understood his personality type, probably like a C I'm guessing a C personality type. Is that what he was? Big time. Big time C, yes. so very conscient in the disc personality yeah. type. So that means analytical thinking and expect him to want to go home and do some research on this and think yeah. about it and email you and, and don't have that be something that frustrates you and go, are you in or are you out? you got to meet yeah. people where they are. you got to adapt to their style, right? Absolutely. Man, so awesome. You're using all the skills. You know, you're talking about all the skills we teach and train and, yeah. and coach clients on so that they can get to this place where patients are saying yes 
so much more. So I'm, I'm, I'm rewarded because you got the patient to a place where they're healthy. That makes me feel good that the, that the things that we train and teach work and that you're applying them uh, just in your practice daily. That feels really good. Eric, I'm grateful for you. And, you know, you've been with us for I, just the beginning of the journey, actually. And it, it, I can't stress the importance of uh, communication skills and the, the tools you've given us to just be able to talk to people and not and be able to listen mm -hmm. and be able to ask the right questions at the right time. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, that's what it really came down to. And, you know, just Amazing. never say the word need. And, um, you know. So true. So true. Yeah. So true. Well, thank you for, for that acknowledgement. I appreciate it. Those that are listening, I want you to hear something. What, what they did at Dana Point Dental, um, what him and Dr. Cifrelli do, you know, both practices is remove friction, uh, remove the friction from your practice. Friction is a business term. That means it's very difficult to do business with me. It's hard to do business with me. And dentistry has a lot of intrinsic friction, meaning it seems painful, it seems expensive, it's booked out really far, I don't have insurance, I'm afraid of the dentist, et cetera, et cetera. We can't get rid of those, but we can get rid of the perception that they exist and we can get rid of the peripheral things like, oh no, we don't do that. We don't do that here. We never say what we don't do. I like to joke yeah. and say, we only say what we do do. And so make it easy <laughs> for the patients to, to, to yeah. feel like you're being flexible for them. The flexibility you create creates trust, it creates rapport, it creates credibility. And so this story was the perfect example. And I want to jump on the podcast with you. I wanted you to get on so that you can share this with other practitioners so that they can hear that this is possible. If you have the right systems, you have the right vision and, and perception, you have the right verbal skills. Now, let's get to the hard part. Did he just have $40,000 laying around? Is this a one-off? Or, or how do you guys make that sort of thing affordable for patients? What are you doing? Well, um, Eric, I think that this gentleman, and, and most people know they don't have $40,000 laying around, but yeah. I think he was ready for this. He was yeah. ready to, and he's a, he's a smart guy. Yeah. Um, and so he, you know, Jennifer, I'm very, I'm blessed. Our office manager, Jennifer, is awesome. really very, she is great. And so she made that process very easy for him. And he, he made a couple of payments, but, um, it wasn't, it wasn't a difficult decision for him. Yeah. It's something that he was ready for. So um, and I think he found, he found it, you know? Yeah. So good. I love everything that you're talking about with this. If there was one thing that you, let's say there's a, maybe a younger dentist listening right now and he or she is listening saying, man, I have the skills. I've gone through the training. I just want these patients in my practice, I want to have access to them. What's the one thing that you've learned over the years, the knowledge that you want to share with them that says, hey, you can you can do this sort of thing too, but here's the one thing that you got to make sure you do in your practice, something you want to share with them. Well, I, I think just remember um, that it's it, it sometimes takes time and uh, don't be intimidated. And and always, I lead with your heart. I mean, the, you you. It, it's passion first and, and patients feel that. So if you're motivated and you, you feel you're able to communicate and connect with these people, and I, I would say just don't be intimidated and be mm. patient. Uh, mm. Give them time to test it. Um, look at, uh, the, at it as an opportunity. Love it. Ultimately, Love it. ultimately though, Eric, I think um, I would tell the, the, you know, don't be intimidated. And, and also, um, you know, it's good to have um, a, a Eric on your side. <laughs> <laughs> have an Eric, have someone on your team that's helping you understand how to do this sort of thing. You know, join us, join us in, in, in mastermind groups, join us on the podcast, you know, have a study club, right? Have a study club that yeah. you're in. You know, I think that clinical skills are foundational, that you have to have them. You have to be a phenomenal clinician to do this. But in the end, it's your people skills that get people yeah. to allow you to apply those clinical skills. So you've mastered both. And I applaud you for your dedication to the field and, and those around you. And it's, it's evident in the, the dentistry that you're performing on your patients. So congratulations on being so thank successful you. at what you do and supporting people. Thank you thank so you. much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. For those that are listening to this, you think, man, I want to do more of that. Reach out to us. You can email Heather at allstardentalacademy.com. If you want coaching, you just want to talk once, you just want to, some advice, 
email us. We're happy to meet with you and talk with you and give you some pointers or hear, hear you. Just listen to what's going on, your struggles. And we're here to support you. So again, Dr. Larjani, thank you so much for spending this, this time you. with us. I really appreciate you. Anytime. Awesome. And for those I listening. You. Oh, thank you. For those listening, thank you for joining us and taking the time to invest in yourself. And until next time, go out there and be an all-star.